three to two, your final score over Rhode Island in 10 innings. And Coach Cliff Godwin is now joining us down in the locker room. And Coach, congratulations on this one here tonight. Uh, you got your depth tested right away here on opening night, didn't you? Corey, that's the thing, especially young guys, they probably think winning college baseball games easy. It's, it's really hard. And I knew that'd be well coached. Their, their pitchers just gave us fits all night. Uh, I thought we were a little anxious offensively, but really happy we won. Uh, I'm not going to be mad with a win. Uh, we'll take that win and run with it. Cliff, pitching out of the uh, jam that you were in in the ninth inning, Colmore coming in, uh, that was the not only key to the game, but um, uh, that was the turning point of the game as well. Yeah, definitely not an easy situation for Cam, but the guy's a six-year senior. He, he's been in the fire, so happy. And if we have an opportunity to lose a game, I can put my head down at night because that guy's out there. I just thought Sailor kind of had lost a little bit as, you know, when we brought uh, Mayhew in after Bridgie. Uh, I thought the same thing, and, and that's the thing is coaches, when you know your guys, I'm not trying to say I'm smarter than anybody else, but talking with the coaches, you can kind of see just something's a little bit off, and, and I felt like Cam would come in there and at least make the guy hit the baseball, which he did, and then Ryder and Norby turned a great double play. You have stressed to all of these guys. You just never know when you're going to be called upon to come up in a moment where we need you. You expect Christian Smallwood to do a lot for you this season, but you called on him in the bottom of the 10th inning when this team needed something. And for the second time in his career, he delivered a walk-off hit for you. Yeah, Corey, I just was joking with Small. Smalls has got uh, more walk-off hits in his career than I had in my career. I never had <laughs> so, uh, um, hey, The smart thing is to put that guy up there when the game's on the line. But, you know, Smalls is a, an extreme team player, a guy that has been in our program going on his third year. Uh, has been hampered by some injuries. And he's going to go to med school one day. Uh, I, I'm, I couldn't be happier for anybody to be put in that situation and, and to be successful. Uh, just super happy for him. Well, Coach, congratulations on this one. You, we waited a long time for this day. You are very thrilled to finally get to this day. And it's even better now that you're starting off 1-0. Congratulations. Only fitting, Corey, only fitting that we go into extra innings after we've had a year off, you know. So, hey, let's make sure. <laughs> yeah, let's make sure Coach Godwin's blood pressure uh, goes through the roof uh, early on. So, uh, but I actually was pretty calm because uh, I know what our guys have put in to, to be successful. So, those guys uh, do the right things 99% of the time. So, glad we won. Appreciate you guys. We'll be with you tomorrow. We'll talk to you then, all right, Coach? See you. Okay, guys, we'll open up the questions for Coach Godwin. Coach, just the kind of thing East Carolina does, you kind of had the sense that you guys were going to come through there at the end, and and once again, you just did. Uh, how do you feel after all this? Uh, relaxed, uh, happy. Uh, glad we got one college baseball game in this season. It's, it's, I was telling a couple people, Corey, Jeff Palumbo, and Austin Knight and I were talking locker room, it just felt weird all day because we've been off from playing baseball for so long and to have game day, it felt like almost the first game we coached here back in 15 against UVA. Just, you know, we, we know our team, but not really. I mean, we don't know them against another team and uh, just happy that the guys went out there and put it on the line and we were able to get a win. Going back to that Colmore, uh, the double play. I mean, I'm sure in their mind, the hitter's trying to get something up, you know, a sack fly. For him to induce a ground ball and that count, especially 3-1, I mean, how just clutch was that of executing a, a pitch? He he executed two pitches, you know. He got 2-0 to 2-1, and then he threw a ball and then threw another strike. And like I said, if we were going to lose the game right there, Cam Coleman deserves to be in that situation, and that's why we brought him in. We knew he would throw strikes. Felt very confident. Um, Cam's a strike thrower, and he was able to get the guy to beat the ball on the ground. Then Ryder and Norby did the rest. Coach, it's not a huge night, obviously offensively, but you know Lane was a spark plug, and also Bryce laying down that bunt. Everybody thinks of him as a power hitter. You know him laying down that bunt without issue. How? Yeah, I'm an idiot hitting. You know Hoover in the nine hole, right? Um, but uh, Hoover is, you know, he actually was struggling a little bit offensively in the past, probably two or three scrimmages. He's kind of like looked like himself and 
Hoover at times because he cares so much, just puts a lot of pressure on himself. And um, But he was vintage Hoove tonight, and then Bryson, you know, has worked on that for four years with Coach Palumbo getting that bunt down. So that doesn't surprise me that he got the bunt down. We practice it as much as any team in the country, and Bryson executed. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people probably won't see that as being a huge thing, but that was – getting hooved a third with one out, and then Smallwood did the rest. Does Joey Perry get any love for the, uh, the friendly hop? <laughs> the guy was playing in. The guy was playing extreme, extremely in there, uh, which they played in a lot. The third baseman played in a lot, and their outfielders played, at least the left fielder, pretty shallow. So um, I – I think it would have got over his head no matter what, as long as he'd have been playing where he was. Uh, Joey Perry gets a lot of credit for uh, getting the field ready. Uh, you know, a lot of people didn't think we could get the game in today, but we actually got a new tarp because our other one was leaking on Thursday about 2 o'clock, so the timing was perfect because I don't know if we'd have been able to play if we'd have had the old tarp. We've been in the press box, obviously. It's pretty warm, but can you give us a sense of, of what was that, what that was like? Obviously, it's still kind of damp and cold. Just uh, obviously a pitcher's night, I assume, out there. Yeah, I mean, that's what the scoreboard said. Uh, I, I didn't think it was that bad now. I, I'm wrapped up pretty good. Uh, so you have to ask Smalls that question. I never got cold, really, as a play. If you're playing now, you know, coming off the bench like Smalls did, he had to do a good job of staying warm and – in our rock room hitting uh, some balls off the tee and stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I wasn't cold. The last Friday when we scrimmaged, when it was misting rain, that was, in my opinion, colder than it was tonight. But uh, I'll let Smalls answer that question for you. Any other questions for Coach Godwin? Okay, Coach, congratulations. Hey, Tyler. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Good to see you, too, uh, man. It's been no a while. Tough no tough questions tonight. No, I was going to ask you if your perspective changed a little bit as a manager after not playing for a year. I, it's it's I it was weird to be honest with you, and uh, we've been managing against one another. You know, the team split up, but like I said, you know, the lineup. I, I you know I was kicking myself in the middle of the game just because I felt like we put too many boppers together, and and I like to kind of mix it up, have some guys that can run. And I felt like I, I just bunched them together too much. So the lineup will be a little bit different tomorrow. Good to know. I, I'm trying to get used to asking questions on Zoom, so I appreciate your, uh, your sensitivity to me on this Zoom call tonight. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for supporting the Pirates. I appreciate it. I'm going to let the guy that uh, deserves all the credit talk to you guys now. Thanks, hey, Malcolm. Coach. Yes, sir. Smalls. What's going on? What's going on? Congratulations, buddy. Uh, we're going to go right to questions for Christian. Well, Christian, just walk us through the at-bat coming off the bench cold. And um, you got down in the count pretty quickly, but were able to put the ball in play and kind of walk us through that at-bat. Yeah, I was just trying to get up there and put the ball in play. Um, I know the infield was in. The outfield was pretty shallow, too. So I was trying to be pretty aggressive. Uh, give us a chance to win. And then I went down 0-2, and I knew that I just had to compete up there and able to get one hit, bounce over his head. So it worked out for us. Can you talk well, about what it does for you guys that sets the table a little bit for the weekend, maybe takes a little pressure off of you on Saturday, having at least one win under your belt? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of momentum going into tomorrow. Uh, you never want to play from behind in a series. So that's definitely going to give us some confidence going into tomorrow, even though we definitely didn't play our best game. and. We've got more to show than that. So, well, Christian, after not after not playing for a year, just to have that celebration with your teammates, what was that feeling like? Uh, just to win in that fashion, first game of the season. No, I mean it was awesome. That's definitely not the way we we draw it up, but it's cool. I mean, like Coach said, we've been split up all year. We haven't been on the same team in forever, so it's pretty fun when we're all, you know, cheering for each other. Um, different kind of competition, but everything we go through and it's been so long since we've played that it was pretty awesome to be able to share that moment with those guys. So. What's it like? Be? You go ahead. Go ahead, Joy. Thank you. Uh, there was a group of fans across the street from the stadium 
said they wanted to be out there embracing the elements just like you guys when they could have been just at home watching. So what does it mean to have just such a dedicated, uh, loyal fan base at ECU? I mean, the support here is like nothing I've ever seen. And that's one of the things that drew me to East Carolina is just the support from the community, the fans, and to endure that weather out there just because they, they can't physically be at the game. I mean, that's pretty awesome. It's special to us. And I think it's something that we got to make sure we don't take for granted because it's not like that at a lot of places. You were in the dugout when, when uh, Colmore was able to get out of the jam in the uh, top of the ninth. Just what was it like to be a part of that? Because I imagine it was pretty tense, and then all of a sudden you guys can breathe a little bit after that double play. Yeah, no, that was huge. When he got that double play, I think the sense in the dugout was we're definitely going to win this game. Like, I knew when we had the double play, I was like, we were going to win this game for sure. And I think a lot of guys thought the same thing. Okay, are there any other questions for Christian? All right, Christian, thank you very much. Congratulations. All right, thank you. See you. Take care, buddy.